Good evening. The winter session of parliament began today amidst expectations of a serious legislative business being conducted finally after the last session, the monsoon session of parliament, was washed out to repeat an often used term. But that turned out to be wishful thinking as both houses got adjourned over the issues of FDI in retail and the SCST quotas and reservations. As a result, the parliament remained paralyzed on day one. The Lok Sabha was dis uh, adjourned for the day after being adjourned thrice during the day following a ruckus over FDI. Meanwhile, in a setback for the Trinamool Congress, Lok Sabha Speaker Meera Kumar rejected its notice for a no-confidence motion as it lacked the support of 50 MPs as required. Both houses have now been adjourned for the day. In a bid to break the political impasse, the government has called for an all-party meeting on Monday. The BJP-led NDA and the left parties want a discussion on FDI and retail under a rule that allows voting on the issue. The Manmohan Singh government says it's ready to debate its policy decision but does not want to vote. Neither side is budging from its position. An all-party meeting called by Lok Sabha Speaker Meera Kumar yesterday failed to break the deadlock. The government has listed 25 bills for the session, including important ones like pension reforms, hike in FDI in the insurance sector and the Lokpal bill, among others. The Parliamentary Affairs Minister Kamal Nath, on his part, has said that a discussion on FDI in retail could well take place under Rule 193, which does not have a vote at the end of the debate. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight on The Big Picture, we focus on yet another disruptive start to Parliament proceedings. We also ask our panellists whether there is any hope of a so-called middle path which will ensure that these important legislative bills get, at the least, enough time to be discussed meaningfully instead of just disruptions galore. Joining me tonight will be Mani Shankarayar from the Congress, Chandan Mitra from the BJP, and very shortly we'll be joined by Kian Balagopal of the CPM. Completing the panel will be Shekhar Ayer, Associate Editor of the Hindustan Times. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. I want to start with Mani Shankarayar, if I could. Welcome to the big picture, sir. We all hope that this session would be slightly different Thank from you. the previous one. Uh, there were hopes that the opposition would at least cooperate on the less contentious bills that are supposed to be introduced. But looking at the first day, Mr. Ayer, the upper house is adjourned, the lower house adjourned thrice before being adjourned for the day. Should we take it as an ominous sign of things to come in this session? I fear that not only is this session going to be wiped out, but it looks as if the entire parliament, the 15th parliament, is going to suffer this fate. I, the floor of the House is supposed to be used for discussion and debate. And it is for the chair to take a decision on the form in which a debate is to be organized. The opposition insists that, uh, I'm talking about the different elements of the opposition, insists that it is for them to decide when and how the House will run, and when and how and in what manner a matter will be debated. So I'm afraid unless there's a commitment to democracy and parliamentary procedure, we can only fear the worst. We cannot hope for the best. Right, sir. I want to go to Chandra Mitra uh, now uh, very quickly. Welcome to the show. First of all, Mr. Mitra, this is your first time with me on the show. The BJP and the left parties both want a vote on FDI and retail. Prakash Javrekar and Rajiv Pratap Rudi have moved a breach of privilege notice against the Commerce Minister on the issue. Are you going to stick to this stand of not letting Parliament... Uh, function or commence over contentious issues or will we see at some point during this session a willingness to engage the government in a meaningful debate, let's say over less contentious issues? Well, you see, the less contentious issues can be raised only once parliament starts running. Now, if the parliament does not start functioning at all, then how can you raise whether they are contentious or non-contentious? So, right at the outset, the government has to decide whether they are ready to have uh, voting on FDI. And uh, no, there is no point in the Congress hiding behind the Speaker's pallu and saying that it is uh, up to the chair to decide uh, whether they should be admitted under uh, 184 or 193. Because we all know that if the government strongly resists, government of the day strongly resists um, uh, a voting resolution, the Speaker or the chair is kind of helpless. So, uh, the Congress has made its position very clear that they don't want to vote on FDI because they know they are going to lose the vote. So, uh, and they, so they say it's an executive decision and there's no need for a vote. A discussion without voting is frankly meaningless. But let us see what the government puts on the table on Monday and I think then uh, some decision can be taken on this. We want to run parliament. 
we are very keen to bring you know our issues on the, uh, in front of the people through the house and this is obviously an opportunity right. that we don't want to miss but the government has to also be flexible and accept that some of the major demands of the opposition which are legitimate demands should be conceded right point taken sir i've just been told that mr balagopal has just joined us thank you so much sir for coming uh, on the show you just heard what mr mitra had to say he's your fellow member of opposition uh, he made some meaningful points he raised some very important points also do you also agree with him uh, that the less contentious issues whatever they might be there is a need for the government to listen to the opposition first what they are saying and the demand that they will not have a vote on fdi and retail do you think that's a fair demand see the, the, just now what we i feel is that the government is not ready for any kind of discussion discussion on this fdi issue so today the, the there is a disturbance in the house Uh, immediately this bsp raised some issues uh, related to the earlier that promotion reservation that bill then sp was creating some problem so uh, the attention was diverted that way and uh, government if government wants to run the uh, run the parliament and we also wants to run the parliament because all the serious issues we have to discuss in the house and this is the genuine this is the original body where the uh, aspirations and uh, issues to come in front of the people right but government is that way not but serious and even uh, minister uh, mr ashwini kumar uh, openly said and other other congress leaders also said we will not go for a noting uh, like that right uh, but the government is not sticking the ministers are not sticking up to their commitments december 7 last uh, year 2011 um the minister for commerce uh, mr anand sharma at that time about this fda issue he assured the house uh, that uh, there will be very serious consultation with the stakeholders and you the stakeholders yeah and you disagree that he did not uh, come through on that ah you know, so right. that is a, that right. is a parliament uh, thing and we also gave a privilege notice breach of privilege quoting the verbatim whether what the ministers uh, told in the house he replied in the right, house right. so this point is taken, the attitude sir. of the government point taken sir on the big picture our specialty is getting you the big picture of course i want to get uh, shekhar ayer in right now we've heard the politician let's hear a non politician what he has to say shekhar bjp wants a vote so does the left on fdi the government clearly doesn't on the face of it it seems like if the disruptions continue the opposition have, doesn't have much to gain politically and on the other hand the government really doesn't stand to lose that much politically at least do you see a middle path emerging if at all and do you think the assessment that the government can actually lose very little politically if disruptions continue does that hold any water well i think uh, the big picture today is uh, we saw you know the most important development i would consider is when the no confidence motion was put before the house there were not 50 members to push it which means that opposition is divided no one wants uh, fresh elections at least no one wants the government to go at this moment so that's that's a big win for government so the government is starting this session with a very clear picture that there is no threat to its stability hmm. now that has been established today now as for how the discussion should proceed on fdi usually what happens is i mean now that the both sides feel that there has to be some form of discussion so you will ultimately see a situation where the opposition has its say and the government has its way so the government may you know be looking for a strategy where it allows for say a few more days of disruption then you know try to get everyone around to some form of discussion because right. this is something opposition and the the ruling party they knows about this kind of strategy hmm. so the first day may appear to be a kind of washout but i would expect next week some things to happen and the stalemate is broken right right i want to go to chandramitra again before i go to mr manishankar ayer i'll come to you mr ayer in just a bit but i want to ask mr mitra this first the country the prime minister said in the morning before the session started faces many economic problems that call for cohesive action and he invited all political parties to join hands in this vital national endeavor his words he reminded the parties they have an obligation to work together the bjp has moved a breach of privilege notice against the commerce minister on the fdi issue do you not think mr mitra that the impending economic hardship that the country faces right now could get worse if we don't pass important legislative bills for example the insurance bill and the pfrda bill well the country is no doubt passing through a very grim economic situation but i must point out that this grim economic scenario is a direct outcome of dr manmohan singh government's faulty policies and they have compounded problem upon problem there are scams galore every day scam is happening and the country's resources are being looted uh, and that in turn is fueling inflation 
And so you have a runaway inflation, you are cutting back on gas cylinders, you are increasing diesel prices to fund this crisis. And then on top of it, you want to bring in FDI, which is going to create further problems throughout four crore people out on the streets because they will lose their livelihoods. So why do, should the opposition uh, be expected to bail out the government when its anti-people policies have caused this uh, total financial collapse virtually uh, in the country? and your fiscal deficit is running away. So uh, how do you expect us to kind of cooperate with everything the government says and says, please join hands, let us bring in FDI and let us barter away all our interests to the Americans, uh, then everything will be okay. Point taken, we sir. We will not agree to that. Point taken, sir. Mr. Sh uh, Mr. Mahi Shankar, you heard what Mr. Mitra had to say. Would you like to respond to him first and then I'll ask you another question after that? I, I wouldn't like to respond, but since you've invited what me you, to what respond... What if you had to, sir? What if you had to? He's... The, the, language, the language that Mr. Mitra has used, the charges that he has brought against the government, they're so serious and the tone is so harsh that one would have imagined that they would join hands with the Trinamul in bringing in a no-confidence motion. On the one hand, they want our government to continue. On the other, they want us to be condemned. Now, they have to make up their minds. He's charged the government with hiding behind the speaker. This means that he thinks that the speaker is nothing but a puppet of the government. We've had, not, we've had deeply contentious issues in the past. This kind of disruption is a feature particularly of the 15th parliament. It's not as if we didn't have very serious differences even when we were in opposition with them when they were in government, and they when they were in opposition and we were in government. Right. This is a new technique that has been started, that if it doesn't go their way, they prevent it going from any way and use the opportunity of Rajya Sabha TV or other channels to conduct uh, uh, to conduct the proceedings of the House. Right, sir. How sir. is that possible? Sir, sir, we I just have to get back to the to the propriety and procedures of parliament right. and unfortunately the current opposition and i was careful to say several elements of the opposition that several elements of the opposition simply do not seem to understand what parliamentary functioning means right so sir, sir, need... they are not interested in a debate on FDI, all they're interested in is in the vote. Uh, Mr. Ayer, Mr. I Ayer. want to debate it. Mr. Ayer. And I don't see whether we have a vote or not is germane to having a discussion. Mr. Ayer, we take and as point. regards whether there should or should not be a vote, it is for the chair to decide, not for Mr. Chandan Mitra we take or your point, Mr. Balagopal. We take your point, sir. Uh, we have to take a small little breather right now. We'll come back to that issue and others after a small break. Lots more to come on the big picture. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the big picture. We're discussing the disruption of parliament on day one. I have with me Shekhar Ayer of the Hindustan Times, associate editor of the Hindustan Times. Shekhar, there are three important anti-graft bills that were scheduled, are scheduled, are supposed to be presented in parliament. In this session, the judicial accountability bill is one. The big one, the Lokpal is another. The whistleblower protection bill is another one. Don't we all agree, including Mr. Ayer and Mr. Mitra and Mr. Balagopal and you and me, uh, that the country needs these anti-corruption mechanisms if parliament disruptions continue? There seems to be no hope for these important legislations. Absolutely. You know, when the house is in disruption, I mean, let alone, uh, uh, you know, any debate. I mean, the bills obviously will have to wait for some time till things settle down. Now, also we are seeing, you know, repeatedly uh, we find Mr. Manisha Karaya referring to sections of opposition. Right. Because today what we are seeing is even parties which are supporting the government are disrupting the house. For instance, today uh, it was a BSP which rushed into the well. And Samajwadi Party also wants to take up issues like LPG, you know, LPG issue. Now, these two parties, BSP and SP, are, are fully with the government. They don't want to rock the government. But at the same time, on certain issues like uh, Mayavati is very keen on the SCST promotion bill is brought forth. And uh, Samajwadi Party is talking about LPG. They want a rollback in that uh, cap on LPG use. So there are so many issues. And, but 
the overall picture that comes is the government doesn't have any problem when it comes to stability. Now, how it should move forward, at least we hear that Lokpal bill is something that, uh, that's priority in the sense that both uh, Congress President Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi have been saying that they want to pass this legislation and they want to send that message out that the Congress is serious about uh, anti-graft measures. Right. So therefore, th there is a priority in the government's mind. Now, the first few days I would expect, you know, the, all the sides want to show a point that they have taken up public issues and they are, uh, you know, they are trying to impress uh, the government to do something. So therefore, there will be a lot of drama at least for the next uh, few days before actual legislative business begins right. to happen. Right. Uh, Mr. Balagopal, let me ask you this. The government spokesperson has said that the government hopes that the opposition, which means uh, you and Mr. Mitra as well, uh, does not stall the session like the previous two through some dubious method. I'm quoting him right now, dubious method referring to the disruptions. He adds further, if the opposition wants to defeat the government, let them get a no confidence motion. So the TMC tried that. We all, we all saw how that ended. Would you say that stalling and disrupting parliament for three-stage session can be referred to as a dubious method? I don't know why the Congress spokesperson is saying like that. Actually, we need, uh, 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 if, uh, uh, when discussing about the non-confidence motion, there also we, we know that we are not supporting that from our CPM or left. Uh, why uh, CPM is saying like that? Uh, actually, like you said, parties like DMK, even some other parties, they were openly saying that this uh, FDI policy, this LPG, uh, these kind of things they are against. And if FDA discussion is coming, they may ought. We, I don't know finally what they will do, but they, that, there is a threat in the mind of the government. That is why they are not allowing the discussion. Hmm. Actually, this is a very serious issue. Nobody can say that this is not an important issue. Even our honorable president, when he was finance minister, he assured the house in the last December that all the stakeholders will be discussed. So we also gave a privilege, uh, a breach of privilege notice today. Why the government is not ready for discussion? Because they want to avoid something. And in the case of Lokpal, Lokpal, we are expecting that it will come in this week itself, in the place, it may be placed before the table. Hmm. Hmm. So we are for Lokpal, we are for other old positive legislations, and we, we need very serious discussion in the house. But the government should not avoid very serious discussions. And I think dubious methods generally government is using. Right, we will take that point. We'll go to Chandra Mitra very quickly, sir. The opposition uh, still hopes, and let's talk about the opposition strategy for a bit here. Uh, the opposition still hopes to crack the coalition on some issues, if I'm not wrong, like the FDI issue. Parties like the DMK, allies like the DMK and the SP will find it very hard, conventional wisdom suggests, to back the government on these issues. Do you think that the opposition, your party, can win them over and then perhaps launch an all-out attack on the government? Which way will these parties swing, if at all? That is precisely why the government needs to uh, recognize the sense of the House. Barring the Congress uh, people who, because they are bound by party norms and discipline, they can't speak out against FDI. But you look at each and every one of their ally. Trinamool Congress left the government because of this. Uh, Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav has made it plain that he is opposed to it. Um, even the DMK, which is an ally of the Congress, they are saying, uh, Mr. Karunanadi has said he is against FDI. Um, Ms. Jalalita is against FDI. The left is against FDI. So can't the government see? The writing on the wall is that the people of India, as represented by uh, the vast majority of political parties in the country, is opposed to FDI. So they must get that sense of the House through a voting resolution. Right, it right. is an executive decision, so the government will not fall. But, but you know, the, unless the government recognizes this sense, I'm afraid Parliament then becomes meaningless. Right. Just ha a reduced to a talking shop where we just make points and counterpoints and nothing happens. Right, Mr. Ayer, you heard what Mr. Chandamitra had to say. Do you think the coalition will crack? And do you think that the uh, the government in power, the UPA coalition, is missing the writing on the wall, as Mr. Mitra uh, said right now? I can see the writing clearly on the wall. They do not have the guts, they do not have the unity, they do not have the purpose to introduce a motion of no confidence against the government. If there is so much unhappiness in the country and in the parties represented in parliament about so many things that the government has done or is intending to do, then why don't they move a motion of no confidence? They can't even get 50 people to bring down our government. They can't even get 50 people together. Right, right. Then 
Then he then 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 we are we are we are asked to believe that they are interested in a discussion. I don't believe they are interested in a discussion. They want to take a vote that will have no consequence other than perhaps some temporary embarrassment. Right. Let's they are away. not interested in a discussion, just as they were not interested in passing the Lokpal bill. They wanted to amend it in such a way that the government would get defeated. Right. Now, I, I really... Bill we are now in the Congress party on the 29th of last December point. last year. Are, let, let me make this point, I'll please. We are in the 50th anniversary of the India-China war. We are in the 50th anniversary of the India-China war right, on the 8th of November 1962. In the middle of that war, the Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, accepted a request from Atal Bihari Vajpayee for a discussion on which there was no vote. Right, sir. So if you can discuss the Chinese aggression on India without a vote, why can't you discuss right, India sir, point in taken, point taken, sir. without a vote? Point taken, sir. Very briefly, Mr. Mitra, very no, no, briefly, no, 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 no. please respond to that. Very briefly. Mr. I, I'm, I'm amazed at the points being made. Chinese aggression in which you want to have a political uh, disunity in the country. Whenever the country has been threatened, all political parties have cooperated cooperated and upheld the national interest. Right. FBI right. is right. against your, the national your interest. Point taken, sir. He, the di he divided Therefore, the country. Point, point taken, sir. I want sense. to come to my studio guest as well, sir. Uh, point taken, sir. I'll come to you, uh, come to you gentlemen, in just a bit. Shikhar, how important is statesman, is that the fact that statesmanship is displayed in this particular parliament on both sides of this aisle. Bipartisan decisions are the basis of any vibrant parliamentary democracy. Do you think we will get to see that in this session particularly? Would parties and leaders uh, of the opposition and the government be willing to raise their game to that level? Will we ever see that? I don't think you're going to see this uh, for the next uh, year and a half because uh, any case you're having parliamentary elections 2014 and what we are seeing is some kind of a uh, boxing bout because on issues like FDI, obviously the opposition wants a vote because it wants to show uh, that the government is uh, isolated, that the allies are not with them on this issue. And the government obviously is pointing out that never before has any executive decision come for a discussion. Mm. Though there is a precedent when Balco disinvestment was discussed in 2001. Mm. So there are issues and every side is trying to put its uh, best foot forward. Right. So the next one year is going to be like this. Right. Mr. Balagopal, uh, he pointed out a very pertinent point. There has been no precedence of an executive decision being put to a vote. How do you expect to do no, that? There now? is one precedent, but that is what he said. Balco issue Balco, was discussed. Yes, apart from so, Balco. if the government, if there is a will, there is a way. If the government is responsible to the people, we are not. Inter we are. We are. Why we are taking this issue? Because four crore people are going to be affected by this decision. Everywhere, all the across the political parties, all the people who are affected, they are very much scared about the livelihood. So, this is a very serious issue. So, these kind of serious issues, government how to take a way out for discussing it and. It is the responsibility of the government. They can maneuver things, but actually, this is a genuine issue. Why we are why we are raising this issue? We, we we are very serious about this issue. Not only this issue, other bills, insurance bill, pension bill. That that is the it is the agenda of the government. If, for as far as CPM and left is concerned, those bills are anti people. You know, anyway, let let it come. But this issue, everyone across the board. Why why we are saying even DMK, other parties, they how to support? That is what he also very learned, and he, he is watching the politics for the last many right, years. Right. So government is scared about that. They have, uh, Mr. Manishendra is saying we will come with a voting. We know voting. If voting is there, then DMK will not vote for that. But DMK, Samajwadi Party, all wanted to show that we are with the common people, so they may vote against the FDA decision. That is what the government wants to scuttle. Right. Absolutely. I have. Uh, we're nearing towards the end of the show. I want to get a brief comment each from Mr. Mitra and Mr. Ayer. I'll come to you, Mr. Ayer, first. Very briefly, sir, if you could. Uh, the same question I asked Mr. Ayer, uh, Mr. Shekhar Ayer over here. Will we see any bipartisanship uh, in this particular session and in the future? And will our leaders, opposition and the government both, be able to raise their game because the country faces serious problems right now? Very briefly, sir, if you could. I'm sorry, your question is misplaced. It's not a question of bipartisanship. It's a question of observing parliamentary procedure, parliamentary propriety and parliamentary precedent. And unless and until all elements of the opposition are willing to make par parliament work, 
and continue resorting to this kind of disruption, I'm afraid the future for parliamentary democracy in our country is very, very bleak. Mr. Mr. Mitra, you heard what, you, what uh, Mr. Ayer just said. Parliamentary procedure has to be followed. The opposition is not really doing that. Very briefly. The future of parliamentary democracy is not bleak at all. It is just that the Congress has painted itself into a corner through their various you know, dubious acts that they have done and the refusal to consult or give any importance to the opposition's point of view. A party which has only 206 MPs out of 543 is behaving as if they have a two-third majority. This cannot be allowed. They must listen to other voices or parliamentary propriety will be restored. Over the moment, the government becomes responsive and sensitive to people's uh, issues and demands. Right. I have just half a minute for Mr. Shekhar Iyer. Wrap it up for us. Uh, we have very little time right now. Uh, you said the, the opposition might have its say and the government will eventually have its way. Is that what we're going to see over the next 20 days? Well, that's that's a normal thing that happens because <clears throat> opposition is also... Uh, doesn't want to give out that impression, uh, you know, the, the, since the monsoon session was total washout, they don't want to give out an impression that, you know, they are disrupting all the time. So one can see in the next few days, you know, uh, I mean, say next week, maybe, maybe Monday or Tuesday, there could be more disruptions. But ultimately, I think there is pressure on the opposition. Also, the government has a huge legislative business. So somehow to work out some kind of a compromise, a give and take possibility, right. and then get the things working again. Last word from you, Mr. Balagopal, will, the, will we find a middle path or not? I think uh, there will be a way and we, we are very much for that and the government will also accept the sentiments of the uh, house, total house and sentiments of the people. Then I think government will take some initiative. Surely opposition will uh, will be. On that note, sir, I must end the show. We're running short of time. I must thank all my guests before I sign off. Manishankar Ayya, thank you so much for joining us. Chandan Mitra, welcome. Uh, I welcome you to the show and thank you for coming. Mr. Shekhar Ayya, thank you for joining me as well as Mr. Gain Balagopal. Thank you for joining us. Like Shekhar Ayya today said, I think that was a line of the show. The government, uh, the opposition might have its say and the government eventually perhaps will have its way. There is need for some middle ground in this particular session. There is a lot of legislative business that is pending around 25 bills that need to be discussed, need to be passed or otherwise. Uh, on that note, Athar Khan will say goodbye, good night, and thank you for watching The Big Picture.